I think it's no secret that the most valuable and popular M1 computer that Apple has made is the M1 MacBook Air. It has the desktop performance of the Mac Mini and the iMac, except you get an ultra portable thin design. Yes, there is the MacBook Pro, but it's heavier, there's fans, there's a touch bar that many people don't like, and it just costs more money. In my opinion, I just don't feel like the MacBook Pro is worth it. I've made two reviews of the MacBook Air so far, an initial review and a long-term review, and I gave this laptop my highest praise. I actually feel like the MacBook Air is my favorite laptop of all time. But that was my opinion then, and months have gone by and I've gotten my hands on brand new computers, and there's also new computers on the horizon. In today's review, we put the M1 MacBook Air through the paces and reassess whether or not this is still the most valuable computer Apple has ever made, and whether or not you should buy it or even wait for what's to come on the horizon for Apple Silicon computers. When it comes to the buying decision of any product, the most important thing is that it meets our needs. And this all falls on the M1 chip in the MacBook Air. If you're a student in school, I have no issues telling you to go out and buy this laptop right now. The M1 will meet all of your needs. Suppose you're just the jack of all trades everyday user. You browse the web, check emails, use social media, and you even go as far as use pro apps on occasion, such as video editing apps and photo editing apps. In this specific case, I still have no issues recommending this laptop to you today, right now. The M1 will meet all of your needs. And right here is where I would stop and where my opinion has changed a little bit, or at least how I convey my opinion online. I think we need to recognize that Apple created a base model laptop for those people, the people that I just mentioned a second ago. But it just so happened that the M1 could punch way higher than those needs I just mentioned in this video. Because of this, it sparked so much enthusiasm over another subset of users who actually end up watching all of these reviews that I make online. So speaking to you, professional users, such as video editors, photo editors, programmers, people who do heavy lifting on their laptop, like nine to five every day, your mileage will vary on the M1 and MacBook Air. Just, it's plain and simple. It depends on your workflow and your need for the utmost speed and performance. And I've realized over the last six months that is just a question I can't answer for you as much as I want to because I have no idea how much power and performance you really need to feel satisfied. But to give you some perspective, I consider myself a professional video editor. Video editing is an incredibly heavy task on any kind of computer. And overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the M1 chip. I edit 4K videos and if I was to be stuck with M1 chip based computers for the next two to three years, I wouldn't be complaining. I, I would still be satisfied with the performance that I have. Part of the reason why I can come to this conclusion is because I use Clean My Mac X on all of my M1 computers. It just makes sure my MacBook is running as fast as possible. So if you guys are interested in checking it out, there will be a link in the description down below. Okay, so there's more to a laptop than just performance. and. I think for a lot of us, more than we want to admit, we want a computer that feels and looks sexy. We want that validation that the thousand dollars we spent on this computer looks like a thousand dollars. The MacBook Air definitely looks the part. The space gray aluminum body is beautiful top to bottom. The weight of the laptop is exceptionally light and I love the fact that there are no fans on this computer. The display is 13.3 inches and it features Apple's Retina display technology. So this means that the colors and level of detail that you see in images and videos on this laptop look pretty good in my opinion. The drawback is that the screen doesn't get that bright. In indoor situations, you'll be totally fine, you'll be satisfied with how bright it gets, but the second you get outside and you have sunshine directly on this laptop, you won't be able to see a thing on this computer. The Magic Keyboard on this computer is excellent as well. It's one of the best typing experiences I've ever had on a computer. 
Touch ID, although a very tiny feature, is one of the most useful things about this computer. It makes it very easy to sign in to macOS, as well as make Apple Pay purchases biometrically online. Trackpad is great. It's huge, it's big, and it's buttery smooth to use. As for the speakers, they're very good as well. In terms of ports on the MacBook Air, you only get two USB 4 ports and a headphone jack. And in my previous reviews, I used to complain a lot about this being an issue, how there's no SD card reader or any extra ports. But the more I thought about it over the last six months, the more I realized, again, this computer wasn't made for me. It wasn't made for the professional user. And for a lot of people buying the MacBook Air, they probably will never connect anything to the computer to begin with. And if they do, it'll be one or two things. So I've changed my opinion. I don't see the limited IO on this computer as an issue. Battery life for me has been fantastic. I don't have real world numbers to give to you, but I can tell you from my experience, I rarely charge my laptop and I have trouble remembering what I do to begin with. It can go days on a single charge, depending how you use it, but don't get me wrong, I can kill this laptop in one day if I wanted to, and I have. Anytime I edit 4K video in Final Cut Pro, and I just sit on the laptop and do that the whole day, the laptop will eventually die within like five to six hours, I think. Listen, as much as I love my MacBook Air, there have been two issues that have been incredibly frustrating to deal with in the last six months. Bluetooth connectivity with third-party accessories, such as my Logitech MX Master 3 mouse, has never gotten better over the time of owning this laptop. It still sucks. The mouse still lags on my MacBook Air, and the only solution is using the included USB unifying receiver for the mouse, but that also means you need to buy a USB dongle to support that traditional USB port, since the MacBook Air only has Type-C ports. This next issue is a little bit more niche. I don't know how widespread it is, but I've had to deal with my MacBook Air literally pink flash of death crashing on me in the last six months, about 10 to 12 times, I'd say. I have no idea what caused the issue, but I can tell you that when I finally reformatted my computer, the issue went away. I have an intuition that it has to do with the fact that I installed applications that were not in the App Store and they were not identified and approved developers by Apple. You actually have to go within your MacBook OS settings and enable the ability to install apps that Apple hasn't approved. And I think that's what the issue is. It's not like I installed you know, random apps. There were very well respected apps in the community that just, you know, that I wanted to test out on my MacBook. And I'm very certain it's one of them, but I, I don't even want to name any apps in this video because I'm not sure what it was. Um, but I think moving forward, if you want the most smooth line, smooth line, the most smooth experience uh, with your MacBook Air, you should just make sure you install apps that are approved by Apple and are available in the App Store. All issues aside, my viewpoint remains unchanged. The M1 MacBook Air is still the most valuable computer in the market today. There is no Windows computer that can give you the level of performance and battery life at $999. It just doesn't exist. You should only be on the fence about buying this computer if you're a professional or heavy user that needs a laptop nine to five every single day because I think the next wave of Apple Silicon computers are going to be extremely powerful. However, you also have to be prepared to pay a lot of money. Apple is gonna charge a hefty premium, I promise you. They're gonna charge a big premium for M1X Pro devices or whatever they end up calling these computers. I also think we need to remember that the M1 MacBook Air is very competitively priced to the rest of the competition, and I think Apple is gonna to start to see this as a problem. Their whole business model is based on hardware sales and profit margins on every product sold. And as a business, you wanna find ways to increase your profits year over year and keep growing. And with these M1 computers, Apple has told the story that they are valuable and fairly priced. And I think the next generation of M2, 
I think they're gonna charge more money. I think with the new redesign of the MacBook Air and the improved performance of M2 based model computers, I think they're gonna charge a premium. 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks, I don't know, but I also kind of envision this sales lineup where they have M1 computers, M2 computers, and M1X Pro computers. I think they're gonna have a very long list of price ranges you can kind of get into the Apple ecosystem similar to what they do with the iPhone. So my conclusion for all of you watching is that if budget is a concern for you, you should probably go out and buy the M1 MacBook Air. I fear for how long cheap pricing will last on these M1 devices because Apple is a hardware sales company. So if they don't keep these products around in the next generation, you may be stuck ending up having to pay more for M2 based laptops that might just be outside of your budget. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Make sure to drop a like down below if you enjoyed, comment down below, hashtag MacBook Air, and subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. You guys have no idea how every like and subscription goes such a long way in helping me build this channel and make more videos every week. But anyways, I'll catch all of you in the next video. Peace.